as you mentioned the uh, 18 amendment to the constitution uh, i would like to know your viewpoint on article 25a especially um article 25 a a the win, which is saying that oh, now on board like you know uh, 16 years yeah, education yeah. is compulsory and um, we need to do some we should have done some homework now for example we need to know okay how many children's you know right now are out of schools they are in lakhs i don't remember exactly the figure now but there are there are millions of students our children who are not in schools okay mm -hmm. then we need to also look into you know uh, what we have to see um, no but it's not enough to say in the 18th amendment um, that okay compulsory education you know article 25c but the um, what they should have done they should have also uh, looked into um, what is the state of uh, education right now how many schools are required how many teachers will be needing how many teachers need to be trained how much money will be be required who is going where the money is going to come from which is the budgetary you know head from which we are taking money out and give it giving it to them what we see we have not we have not seen that kind of preparation that shows that in any case like in our in our constitution there are so many fundamental rights which are given to us mm -hmm. for example article 38 article 25 which also say no discrimination on the basis of sex it's not as if our constitution does not give us equal rights i think um, if, although our content uh, our constitution is full of contradiction um, there is usme tazadat bhi hai magar ye hai ki bahut sari cheeze achhi bhi hai equality ki bhi hai but what is happening that when it comes to practice uh, then our state is not doing anything to implement those articles to translate those article into practice i think they have done exactly the same with the 18th amendment they are giving us the right in the 18th amendment to education but practically uh, we have not seen uh, our government or state preparing itself to uh, really provide education to all you know and the kind of money is involved the kind of preparation the kind of training the kind of building infrastructure rather what we have seen very irresponsibly some of the educational programs have been closed down because of the political reason for example this nchd you know that because it started in musharraf's time so i think punjab government is very reluctant others are similarly national education so what they are doing you know they are closing down some of these programs and i think it's purely because of political reasons and and there is no uh, sense of responsibility towards those uh, children who are going to these schools or towards those who are teaching and you know the employees and this shows the total anti people and uh, apathetic uh, ap apathetic uh, uh, you know attitude of our state towards people of pakistan so, uh, okay uh, how you interpret education as free and compulsory stated in the constitution and how this article 25a will impact girls education especially no if they implement it of course if, of course it will impact tremendously you know because when the people when the girls are educated up to age of 16 you know um, i think then they uh, they'll have the whole world open to them you know they can access to information they can go um, you know nowadays it's a, it's a world it's a new age of communication technologies the people have access to so many uh, you know various communication means you know and i think the girls are always very uh, serious you know when haven't they have opportunity they'll make good use of that which we are already seeing that whenever we are wherever we're giving opportunities to our young girls you know they are excelling you know whether it is um, medical field or engineering or uh, it I mean, I mean you see and even if the results of uh, you know matriculation or uh, a level or o, uh, wherever you look around you know comes because uh, of so after so difficult so many difficulties once it comes in their way they, they make maximum out of it you know mm -hmm. and boys are normally also tend to uh, waste their time around and you know walking you know so i suppose it's because of that those attitudes you know but our girls are doing really well okay okay let's suppose uh, the infrastructure has been provided uh, we are talking about those areas where infrastructure is better schools are there mm -hmm. universities mm -hmm. are there colleges are there 
what are the legal implement implication if any family doesn't send her child to the schools even it should have uh, the you know i mean the thing is like if you go for example uh, in how it happens in in the west for you know the way there's a compulsory education because you have to then put the system in place for example as soon the child is born for example it needs to be registered immediately you know with the local uh, union council and as soon the child is like turn age okay not here uh, here we can say okay five uh, the local schools should make sure the child is in school you know if the child is not in school uh, then we have to have like the system in place where somebody has to visit the family and find out why the child is not in school you know and um, if the parents and find out the reason um, uh, like for example where it is a compulsory education and the parents are not paying attention to children normally the state takes over like social department takes over the responsibility of the child they'll even remove for example what happened in the west you know they'll remove the child from that parents who are not sending their child be, to the schools because they believe that, that that parents are not working in the interest of the child so the state should work in the in interest of the child you know so it's not like as I'm saying if we are really committed to uh, provide this compulsory free and compulsory education then we have to put the entire system in place mm -hmm. in system of information who is born how many children children when they're going to school when they're dropping out why they're dropping out tracking them you know and if state has to do that you know they, they, there has to be departments who are supposed to be doing this you know. and if we won't do that of course you make it compulsory nobody is going to send it and you know, nothing okay, will happen talking about the 25a in the constitution hmm. uh, to what extent you are optimistic about its um, implementation I think I'm not so much, um, you know, uh, optimistic, but I, what I feel that it's a step forward. It gives citizens a lot, lot of uh, power to demand. For example, I can go to the court, you know, I can tell the, go to the court and say, look, my government is not fulfilling this you know is not doing this in my area is not providing free education so i think uh, people uh, it gives an, a lot of power to people because it gives them as this as a right you know so at least even people are if the government is not giving us the right at least we have that right to claim and demand and ask for it before that that was not the situation so for me it is still a step forward it is excellent thing which has happened to pakistan in terms of its constitutional provision as for implementation is concerned of course I'm not that that uh, hopeful with the existing um, you know um, uh, status quo situation and those who are our ruling class and those, are, those policy makers who are sitting in our uh, you know in our institutions I don't think they are so committed to really translate this commitment to constitutional provision into practice but however I feel um, the people of you know it gives us a lot of uh, power and it gives us a tool in our hand to demand that uh, everybody should be provided free and uh, compulsory education what uh, economical implementation will be if uh, 20 article 25 a will be implementation proper properly look i haven't worked that out i'm not an economist that how much uh, resources will it re required but certainly you can't do that with two percent of uh, budget the the budget which is two percent but two percent of our gdp uh, is not going to be i'm my sense is it has to be increased at least by ten percent you know uh, um, our budget uh, education budget should be at least ten percent of our gdp uh, but i think this is it's this is not a rocket science any economy can sit you know look at the number of children um, up to 16 uh, how many uh, you know schools are required how many how much you know money will be required so they can work out the details you know how, but of course it will require resources it, it's not going to we cannot um, you know um, uh, implement or fulfill this uh, whole thing um, in kind of um, two percent of the budget you know some of the religious scholars, Achso, they, okay. They are, they are not okay, they don't want uh, secular education yeah, and all they, that. They just, uh, they just believe that the, for girls it's enough to get some Islamic You'd education and that's it. Okay, for you are asked, your question is only with regard to women or women, women only. 
Yeah, because I think this religious uh, so-called, I would say, the religious scholars, not the, the real scholars, religious scholars do not think like that. But the so-called religious scholars, since they believe, you know, very strongly on the sexual division of labor, they believe the women's roles are only within the private arena of home, four walls of home, as mothers, as wife, and the men has a role to go out and earn um, and, uh, and and take the responsibility outside the home, and men, a man is the bread earner. So I think with this this kind of ideology, they believe that the women do not have to go for a, have an education because she is not going to work and so there is no need for her to educate you know so that is one thing because of that thinking you know because they see women essentially as a dependent of a man for her material economic existence they perceive women as a dependent of a man you know which I have a serious problem with because what if a man is not in my life what if a man die in my die uh, uh, you know out on uh, on me if a man get crippled or accident or whatever you know because I think as a, as a human being I should uh, a woman should have the ability to live you know without the support of any other uh, person you know and we should make everybody to uh, uh, empowered enough that they can live um, economically survive without the support of others otherwise so you're, if, if your very survival is dependent on someone else how could you guarantee that that person will treat you well you know and uh, and god forbid if that person is not treating you well then what will you do so I think it's absolutely incorrect, you know, um, we have seen in Islamic history women doing their own businesses, as a Khatija is one example, you know, um, where women economic empowerment is, impo is import important, you know. And the second thing is, of course, the mullah is very uh, upset, you know, they, they, they are very scared of secular uh, thing because secular education does not mean that the people become infidels or irreligious, but, but the thing is that secular education, uh, education creates tolerance you know tolerance pluralism uh, secularism mean that all hamadiniyat all religion um, you know people should have like um, you know um, the people should have uh, to live to, to perform you know to live their life according to uh, the teachings of their own religion however the state does not have the religion you know the religion because state has to take care of the interest of all its citizens some of them could be Muslim others Hindu Christians you know in, in one country there are so many people living who belong to different religions you know so I think they are scared mullah is um, you know um, doesn't like secularism because secularism uh, creates tolerance you know and pluralism and mullah wants to go in a very rigid manner you know islam and nothing else should you know like islam in the sense that they feel um, hegemony of uh, islam uh, they would like to say you know that, that we have to so they do not they want that state should become should have a religion um, which I think in um, is is uh, from the from the human rights perspective um, uh, you you a theocratic state cannot deliver justice to those who belong to different religion you know a secular only the secular state can deliver justice to citizens belonging to different religion you know.